partes como la acromio para un crecimiento o un crecimiento con esos pacientes. Allí podemos también ahora empezar la exploración. Pero siempre hay que entender muy bien que aunque lo estamos mirando en grosor, siempre terminamos conociéndolo en una sección anatómica, pero como tomografía. Así que uno tiene que girar la sonda una vez más y ver estas estructuras en planos ortogonales. Eh, largo, por ejemplo, con el patrón de un pico de loro para el supraespinoso, con su inserción en la repisa del tuberosa mayor, aquí la caja humeral. Y de ahí también conocer muy bien que estos planos ortogonales hay que conocerlo también en un eje corto. With the patient sitting on a round stool, with no backrest, no armrest for the arms, and you kind of tango around around the uh, the patient, making sure that the knees, the patients, and your own knees are close together, so you can easily get around. Unlike the tango, tango uh, takes about three to five minutes. The ultrasound exam, I think Tony just left me about 20 minutes to do a normal shoulder exam, which is about typically what you're doing, approaching the shoulder from the front, as he showed, from the superior aspect, from the posterior aspect, and then with the arm and extension from the superolateral uh, aspect. Attention to is having the patient's arm, I don't know if you can see, if you zoom out a bit, uh, the patient's hands up, the patient's hand and laying on the, on the uh, patient's knee. So in scanning the front of the shoulder, we'll be uh, looking at the biceps tendon in transverse axis. And we'll be scanning from the top extra portion of the biceps. On your right side is the lesser tuberosity. On your right, on the left side, is the greater tuberosity, much around the structure. We'll be only scanning the biceps transverse or short axis going from proximal to distal. And what I consider the distal part is where you can kind of see the pectoralis tendon blend in. So the pectoralis tendon coming in from the right and inserting on the tuberosity. Deep to that pectoralis is visible uh, the uh, long head of the biceps. So this is a distal point where sometimes fluid can pool up. It's also very important in wave lifters that you check this for possible tear of the pectoralis tendon. We scan back up to the more proximal biceps tendon, always making sure that the, that the probe is perpendicular, not angled as this would be, where you can kind of see that the tendon becomes hypoid, right? Or maybe in the opposite direction also, uh, a little bit of off the perpendicular, you'll see the tendon becomes hypoid, right? Now, as you scan more proximal, you'll come now to the <coughs> biceps tendon in the rotator cuff interval, and the shape of the biceps changes a bit. Now, in that intercapsular biceps, you notice on the right, on the right side of the screen is the subscapularis tendon, and on the left side of the screen is the anterior supraspinatus tendon. So the biceps really is not only an, an, an axis of joint where you can see joint fluid, it's also a division between uh, the anterior portion of the cuff, the subscapularis, and the anterior supraspinatus tendon. As was mentioned before, it's very important to look at the shoulder dynamically. And in doing so, you look at the subscapularis, and maybe if you can zoom out a bit so we can see the arm of the patient. So what we are doing now is we're bringing the arm from internal, and you see how close the biceps is relative to the coracoid process, to external rotation. In external rotation, you'll see a lot more of the subscapularis tendon. It's a very important maneuver if you look for impingement in the subcoracoid space because the bursa, uh, the coracobrachial bursa, that small space can get caught or you can get calcifications uh, that are catching in the subcoracoid space. So always check this maneuver. Uh, in the internal rotation, the bicep disappears under the coracoid and then it reappears subscapularis and everything should go very, very smooth. <coughs> Now, biceps tendon, as we scan it out from top to bottom, uh, we're 
remember also to turn your transistor longitude on. In doing so, make sure that you push a little bit more as it will be pressing more deep on the, on the more distal aspect of the biceps. I will be able to get the biceps nice in one line. So there's more effort, more pressure on the bottom part of your transducer. Deep to the biceps, you can see the anterior circumflex artery pulsating uh, deep to the biceps in the front, kind of over the humerus. That's the anterior circumflex. Now, as we have the patient turn a little bit to the left side, <coughs> still using that same anterior window, I will be sliding the transducer over the top of the shoulder. I'll be looking at this acromioclavicular joint. Maybe just two focus moments. So on the right side is the, is the clavicle, and on the left side is the acromion. And in between, you see the uh, acromioclavicular joint. In some patients, you can actually see a disc, a fibrous disc, just like a meniscus very echogenic. To look for abnormal mobility, they always have the patient to maybe if you zoom out a little bit, and have the patient move the arm on the opposite shoulder. By doing so, you actually stretch the AC joint, and you see it how from one position to the other, it's a little bit of movement. The AC joint, can pull, the uh, clavicle pulls away, and then comes closer to the acromion. And there should be no significant up and down movements during that adduction over cross maneuver. Then we move on to the posterior shoulder and have the patient turn with the bar. We'll be looking at the posterior aspect of the shoulder joint. Now, again, uh, dynamics is very important. So we'll bring the arm over on the opposite side, so internal rotation and then external rotation. And we see the contraction of the infraspinatus over the posterior shoulder. I move my transducer. It's important the, the posterior shoulder is a little deeper, so you have to zoom out to get more depth to this uh, scan. So orientation on the right side is the humerus. On the left side is the scapula. The little triangle you see connecting the scapula to the humerus the little triangle on the glenoid side is the labrum, the little fibrous cartilage. You see that by internally rotating, you get infraspinatus muscle, which is dark, over the labrum. And by bringing the arm in external rotation, now you bring the tendon, which is more white, bright, over the labrum. This is the best image to look for joint fluid, because you have a, a contrast of white tendon to white labrum, if there's any fluid, it's going to separate. Now keep your focus also, when you bring the transducer more medial, and you rotate it a bit with the, the medial end of the transducer up, the focus on the spinal glenoid notch, the notch of the suprascapular artery, the vein, and the nerve. Now when I bring the arm from internal to external rotation, you'll notice that there is a vein that becomes much larger. So collapse the vein, and by external rotate, you kind of expand the vein. So the vein kind of expands. If you have a ganglion, patients with ganglion can have a fluid collection. If you change from internal to external 